Welcome back to Tips and Tricks with Federico. This time we're going to focus on how to create high impact CVs. Previously, I created a video that teaches you how to create amazing LinkedIn profiles, how to level it up that experience. But now let's focus on something that is more common, how to create those CVs. There are only two disclaimers. The first one, this video is for people with at least three years of experience. I'm going to create a second video where I'm going to teach about people with a lower amount, but this one, at least you should, you should have three. With two, you can still consider it, but hey, at least three is the ideal case. The second one, I have never worked in the HR sector, but I have sent over a thousand CVs all across Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. And in December, I was able to relocate from Poland to Spain, and I'm not an EU citizen, so it's not an easy deal. Because every time that I have a conversation, the question, do you need a work permit, was there. And I can say, hey, I was able to succeed during the corona crisis. And now, let's get started with these tips and tricks. The first trick and the most important, focus on results. All across this video, you will constantly listen to me telling you, focus on results, because that's something that many people underestimate me. Believe me, I have seen several CVs, and now that I know this, when I check a CV, it's easily forgotten. The next one, the first page is key. The first page is your introduction. If it's unclear what is there, people are not gonna pay attention. The third one, the structure. In the first part is who you are. Maybe you have a nice picture about you that is related to the position that you are applying. And also, do not expose unnecessary information like your age, your gender, your religion, and other details that are unrelevant to the position. After that, your work experience. Again, focus on the results, what you have accomplished. Do not give vague details like what, is, what are my tasks and things like that. No one cares about it. I can get it from a LinkedIn job offer and copy and paste it. So be careful. Also, after that, you're gonna add your education. If it's related to your job, why not add it there? In some cases, it might not be necessary, especially if you have a long career. And it's important that when you have a long career to put all the positions that you had in the company. If you have four different positions, add the four different positions. Do not add one because then you are taking additional points from you. After that, you can add the references, your hobbies, other details. But again, focus on the results of those things because the important one and what makes you unique are the results. Now, let's go to the CV. Before continuing, I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and most importantly, do like, because I would like that more people can learn about these important tips and tricks. The first secret of success that is focused on results, we're going to analyze a CV, one that is generally poor, that I used to send until 2019. There are some good things, but generally speaking, it's a bad CV. The first section is your introduction. It should be as simple as possible. And honestly speaking, you should avoid things that can ought to discriminate you. Like, like say, hmm, it's going a little bit down. Your age, let's say that you are 31. Believe me, to add these details is not adding any value. Because hey, if your position doesn't require like a specific age, like collecting fruit, or doing certain things, why you're going to add those details? The second one I have seen is gender, like male. Another mistake that I have seen in people adding in the contact information in the introduction about you, your civil status, like you're single, Imagine someone in certain societies checking this combination, you're 31, you're a male, and you're single? Believe me, it can be a red sign for some people. It depends on the society, it depends on the culture. Some people are less open to these things. So you need to be very careful when you're adding these details. And another very controversial one, especially if you are a foreigner, your citizenship. If you add these four details, you can be easily discriminated by certain societies and by certain people. Why you're gonna tell that you're 31? 
Why are you going to tell that you're a male or a female? Why are you going to say that you are you're single? And why are you going to say that you're a Salvadorian? If these things are unrelated and unrequired in the position, do not even mention them. They are not going to give you the right results. So let's not even think on these things when you're writing a CV the next time. Please do not add unnecessary details. Now let's focus again in the other section. The summary of qualifications. This is too long and too generic. Leadership and high quality developer. It doesn't mean anything. Making elevator pitches on the fly and public speaking. How do you prove it? Very organized to accomplish academic and corporate work goals. Again, focus on results. None of them is telling you how I perform elevator pitches, how I perform in public speaking. All these things are unclear. Even when I go to advanced developer in .NET technologies, it's unclear. Where did you use it? How did you use it? All those things are unclear. Be very, very precise. And honestly speaking, I will replace this with a new section of soft skills or hard skills where I focus on the things that I would like that the people read. Why? Because another secret is that your first page is the most important. If you have a CV of 10 pages like in India or you have only one page CV, that must be the most important. If you have two pages, three pages, the first one is the crucial one because it's what the people are going to check. So do not waste it adding things that are not gonna give you the right results. Now, the next section is about your experience. What is wrong here? As I said, none of these are results like planning and delegation of tasks. How many tasks am, am I delegating? How many projects I'm planning? How many things I'm doing? All those things are unclear. Planning, maintenance, and creation of robots with automation anywhere. Again, it's unclear. How many roads I'm building? How many projects I have led with automation anywhere? None of this information is important. And another common mistake that I have seen in certain people is that they mix the positions because it sound, it, they think that it looks cooler that you started to work in 2015 and you have been working until 2018. Believe me, that's not a good thing because you're not showing a progression in your career. So be careful. In my case, I don't have it because I have senior, system senior systems engineer and technology analyst, two different positions. But I have seen some people that they combine them. Be careful about that. The next one. I have this other position that is in a non-profit. Again, it's just still unclear. Organizing and training new board members. How many people were trained? How were they trained? Who helped you? All that information is not here. Be careful with that. Results, results, results. For example, I trained at least 40 people during one year. I didn't say anything of that here. You need to be careful about that. This one, more or less the same. But you can see there is another tricky mistake. A big dot, a small dot. If you think that this is irrelevant, trust me, a recruiter that is very good in their job, they will look at it and they will be careful about it. Be careful with that. And as I said, this one, this could be considered like a result, modernization of an old macro system, but it should be modernized instead of modernization. It should be in the past because this is already done for reports creation. Again, this is in the past, another mistake. Then let's go to the next page. In this one, again, nothing is written in the past. And again, I don't give results. Development, support, and improvement of different projects based on WCF. Unclear. Unclear. How many projects? What did you accomplish? None of that information is here. The same happens in the next one. The next section is about your education and professional training. Is it required or not? I will say that if you have at least five years of experience, based on my experience, it's not really relevant if you don't have a PhD or a specific course that will give you an extra point. But education is highly important because in my case as an immigrant, the lack of a bachelor's degree or a master's degree wouldn't allow me to come to Spain. Believe me, in the highly skilled workers visa, these are a must, not a should. They are a must. And finally, the awards. I will say this is correct. You don't need to give me any details. Perhaps if you have a link, it's a good thing so people can check it. 
if you have a diploma, upload it to OneDrive, Google Drive, or anywhere else so people can check it. That's more than enough. If you don't have them, you don't add them. But if you have, for example, some hobbies, some other things, you can add them, but focus on a couple of them, perhaps the ones that are related to your position. Maybe speak about your soft skills. That will be more important. The references, they are correct, nothing special, the role of the person, the email, the, the telephone number, and the basic information. And finally, the portfolio and apps. This, in my opinion, should be in a different section because it's until the end. And I would like that people check this information now, not until they reach this place. Because imagine, if the first page was poor or too long that they will not even check it and they will not be curious, very likely they will never reach this place. So, yeah. This is the first thing. This is a bad CV that I created in the past. But as I said, there are a couple of things that can be useful, like your introduction. This one will replace it for something about your skills your experience, which is the first thing that should be introduced, your education, your awards, if you have any, or that you would like to add something else like your hobbies, the nonprofits that you support, the references, and the portfolio on apps. I don't think it should be here, to be honest. This part is very, very bad. It should be somewhere else. We're gonna check in the different CV to give you a, an idea how it should look like. We're going to analyze a small variation of the one that I presented that gave me the results. It's based on the feedback that I received from uncountable recruiters. I'm really thankful for their work. And as a, just a quick reminder, focus on results. This CV is based on that. The first one is the contact information. As you can see, here there are no age, no random details, nothing about it. A picture should be good enough and related to who you are. If you are, for example, an artist, maybe you need a different picture. But in my case, I'm a professional. I'm someone working in the IT sector as a software architect and manager. I cannot present a different picture because it might not give the right impression. Next, your name, the position that you have or the one that you're looking for, and an elevator pitch, the one that introduces you to the people. How many years of experience? What are you focusing on? And for example, in my case, I have a very precise Topic at Infosys, I say considerable FPS with RPAs increase the performance of many tools and led effective migrations to Azure during COVID-19. This is very important. The next one are my contact details, like my email, my phone number, my location, my website, LinkedIn, Skype, GitHub, Instagram. Information that is important for the recruiter to check about you and know more about your information. The next section, the technical skills. I replaced the previous summary of qualifications because it was exactly a good description. So here I added the technical details, like my development skill, the practices that I follow, the tools that I use, cloud platform and services, burgeoning frameworks and libraries. This information that I have here is key, but be careful. If you add things that you don't have or that you don't know, it's not gonna help you. So be careful in what you're writing. And if you work in a different sector, there's not the IT sector, maybe you need to have a generic section called skills where you highlight the section or soft skills like if you have leadership or other things. But in the IT sector, we are generally hired for this area. That's why I highlight these points so people are aware of what I know. The next section, work experience. This is my current position, remote Madrid, Spain. I explained that I'm leading 14 apps migration from on-premises to cloud, including estimations and architectural designs using mainly platform as a service. This information can be upgraded because right now I have already migrated 13 and there are even more on the queue. There are already databases on the cloud and there are many other things that we're already doing. But yeah, this is an introduction. As you see, there is a number here. Also, I highlight, I cooperate with three teams located in India. Databases, Java and Tableau. It can be upgraded also because I have even people working in Sweden and, other, and collaborating with other people working in Spain. So there are other information that can be improved. But we're going to analyze my previous position because this was too fresh when I started to write it. When I was a tech consultant in Infosys, 
design the architecture and let the migration of 10 RPAs in Automation Anywhere, 10 .NET apps, 6 DBs, and 3 macros from on-premises to Azure during COVID-19. The Scrum team, 8 people, collaborated remotely with members from Costa Rica, Turkey, and Poland. Also, this process enabled home office to multiple people. What, do you, what you can see here? Results. Some people might have write something like, let me give you an example. People might write something like this. Design and architecture and work with people remotely in different countries. Many people will write this and add it as a definition, or let's say as a job description, because this is what people tend to do. What is the difference between this and this? This is unclear how many people you work with. Perhaps there are grammar mistakes. Also, this is written in the present. This is in the past. I'm not working there anymore. So you shouldn't write these things. This is a better description. The next one, revealed to bots, one for master data and one for reporting, while collaborating with a four-person team managed by Kanban. This recovered the trust of one engagement in robotic process automation and saved two FTEs. As a result, a new RPN was one that saved two FTEs more. I will say that the majority of people will write something like this. Create bots with automation anywhere for master data and reporting. This could be the most likely scenario that people will write something like this. And believe me, this is completely unclear. Also, again, it's in the present. Be aware of the tenses. If something is already done, it's done. I'm not creating those bots anymore. That was in the past. Focus on the results in the end. Because this is a job description, something that you can get from a LinkedIn job offer. Now that we have analyzed the first page, the key one, to be hired, we need to focus on the additional pages. The second one, I keep speaking about my experience as an entrepreneur, but my accomplishments, what I have accomplished. For example, pitch business ideas to multiple organizations, including representatives from Microsoft, Cisco, NASA, and the United Nations. This is clear, man. Then I carry on with my experience in Infosys as a senior systems engineer. What I did, what I did as a systems engineer, because this is creating a progression and a career in your area. After that, I, I speak about my volunteer experience. I explain that I was an area director in Toastmasters, and I explain that I was chosen as the second best area director in the District 108. I provide that information. I explain my work as a mentor. And in my case, because I work in the IT sector, at the end, I explain about my soft skills. Leadership, public speaking, storytelling, IT consulting. But if you notice something, all these things are mentioned before in the positions, in what I have accomplished. This is clear that I have done this in the past. It's not that I'm telling you a story that I have these skills. It's just I'm highlighting that I have these specific skills are the ones that I use more often. And finally, we're going to move to the third page. In the third page, I speak about the certificates that is related to my education, the conferences and courses that I have taken, my personal projects. Hey, these are the projects that I'm working right now. You can visit them. The articles that I have written, the languages, honor and awards that I have acquired over the years, my interests and references. If you notice something peculiar about this is that I do not expect that they have a master's degree or a bachelor's degree. And the thing is that if you have more than five years of experience, it's not going to make like a huge change when you're applying. At least in my case, it was not so relevant. If I had a PhD, probably it will increase certain visibility. But if it's not the case, your experience and your results are the key to succeed. Some of you might be wondering, hey, Federico, and how did you create your CV? Did you use any specific tool, maybe Photoshop or something else? And the answer is yes. I use a tool called Novo Resume. This is an online tool, a paid tool, but very, very easy to use. And in my opinion, the best one in the market. 
it allows you to use even some templates that adapt to your needs. Like for example, in the free templates you have for zero to five years of experience that adapts if you're a basic executive, college, creative. You can move to seniors, to people that have more years of experience. And finally, you can go to even to add some cover letters. Yeah, sometimes these things are important and I wrote several of them. Are they useful or not? Well, it's up to you. But what I can tell you, this tool is extremely powerful. What else? When you're already using the application, it allows you to edit, create everything, choose your layout, the one that fits your needs. You can choose a theme if you want, do some settings and many, many other things. What's the best? It's extremely easy to use. You can start just with doing directly click and additionally, it's going to start giving you tips and tricks in how to improve it. It's going to analyze it, provide you some ideas. And when I do click, it expands. But what else? For example, when you go to another section like this one, you have a warning sign. Why? Because generally, you should have only six bullet points, not seven. But in some cases, yeah, like in this opportunity, in this previous job offer, I cannot avoid them. But generally speaking, six is the ideal number in my opinion. As you can see, I can keep adding, and if I want to modify something, I just add it here. In this section, I split it in two. This is not always good, just so be careful about it. I added soft skills, finally certificates, and as you can see, everything is extremely easy to use. It doesn't take you too much time to modify something or to add it, and all is in a blink of an eye. Hopefully, this tool can give you some insights, because trust me, as you can see, the first page is key and the tool helps you to accomplish what you expect. Now let's summarize. The first part, focus on results. People do not want to read job descriptions. I can get that from the internet. Focus on what makes you unique. The next one, the first page is key. If the first page has too much information or is not the right one, people are going to say next. The third one is structure. The first part is your elevator pitch, your introduction. Do not add unnecessary things like your age, your gender, your citizenship, or other things that are not relevant to the position. After that, you need to speak about your skills. Highlight what makes you unique. Then, the experience. Focus on the results. Again, do not give job descriptions. And if you have a career, Highlight that you have multiple positions in one company. Not that you have only one position when you are not the CEO, the CTO, or something like that. Because it would be very rare that you didn't have a progression in your company and you were all, always the CEO. In that case, it makes sense. But if you are a software engineer, trust me, it's not exactly the best thing. The next one, your education. In some cases, might not be required if you have more than five years of experience and a long career. The next one, any other information that you need to want and highlight, like for example, your accomplishments. Hey, you're working a nonprofit, but again, the results of being in a nonprofit, not only that you're part of a nonprofit, and maybe you can add even your references. And these are the tips and tricks that I can give you. Maybe you have others that you would like to share it. Go to the comment section and share them because we need to keep building more agents of change. And until the next time, Bye.